Carlos, I appreciate your time. I know you're busy, especially this time of year. And I know you're getting ready for Houston. You're, you're preparing for them. But if I can, I want to go back to the San Francisco game uh, this, this past week. Um, it was as big a win as, and I've been around this team a long time, but as big a win as I can remember in a while because of when it came in the period of time when the team was having some struggles. Yeah. It, must have, it must have really been a great locker room afterwards. Yeah, I mean, in the video itself uh, from that last play, just look at the sideline, look at the field. Like, I saw that, um, um, I think my uncle or somebody sent me the video of the last play, and I saw it. And the energy from the sideline that you could see the guys on the field when that play happened, it just, we just all ex exploded because that was a big deal to us. And we were able to get it done, and we've been working to get it done for so long. So it's a big, you know, burden lift off your shoulder. I wanted to ask you about that. So you sack Jimmy Garoppolo in the end zone for a safety, play number one. Then you come back and you knock that pass down at the three-yard line, which basically seals the win. And then everybody, as you said, on the sidelines goes crazy. Have you always had kind of this flair for the dramatic? You had a couple of those big plays last season right at the end of the game i mean it's it's uncanny how right when it's needed you make the play uh that's what i expect of myself and you know that's why they brought me here to be a game changer and coach put me in on that last play and i was able to come through for our team and that was a big uh great feeling too just to see how how happy the guys were and to celebrate and to finally come through because obviously those opportunities hadn't um, happened in that matter uh, up until that point. So we've been still working for it, taking the same approach. And when it happened, we were ready. You've talked about that, the, the kind of the way they're using you this year, the team is using you this year, kind of sparingly maybe a little bit during the season. And now as you get toward this stretch run, and there's still a chance certainly for the playoffs, that you see more and more time and the expectation is on you for those those big plays. How have you dealt with that? And it looks like, at least from our standpoint, that it's pretty successful because you're making those plays when they ask you to. Uh, well, I had to uh, change my uh, approach a little bit because, you know, as a rhythm player, I like to build into it, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, snowball effect normally is thought of in a negative way, but in my terms, I'm thinking of in a positive, like, you know, you catch more fire, you know, like a like a boxer in a, in, in, a, in a ring. Nobody really gets the knockout on the first punch unless they're just, you know, that much of a better player or boxer than the other guy. But um, in, the, in the role that I'm in, that's expected of me. So I just come in with that mentality, you know, and, and when they make the call, communicate with my guys and everything just was in alignment. You know, it wasn't just me on that play. You know, coverage was tight gave me time, me and Carrie were in sync, gave me space, you know, so like, yeah, I might be getting the acknowledgement for that play, but I, I'm full aware that, you know, there was 10 other guys that were where they needed to be for that to happen. And that's what really happens on these type of plays. How about those 10 other guys and, and you in there at, at any time during the course of the season? Started out a little rough, but where you have come to now literally you might be giving up some yardage between the 30s, but literally one of the best defenses statistically right now. Um, how do you explain that? Uh, well, guys are starting to set into their position, like you said. Um, we've had injuries, we've had competitions, um, we've had you know young players getting the experience, we've had a combination of different things going on. So now that guys are starting to get their rhythm and what, what's going on and how they're gonna be used, they're starting to um, put a stamp on their identity, and we, as a collective, are taking ownership and establish that identity, and I feel like it's coming to fruition. You mentioned the younger guys. They look up to a guy like you. Uh, have you reconciled the fact that you're the elder statesman now up on that defensive front? It's still kind of weird because, you know, I feel great. Uh, you know, I can run with the fastest of the guys, so I, I feel like I'm still one of the young guys, but but I could feel like when I say certain things or when I you know, try to communicate my vision or my perspective or my approach, like how many guys are like, you know, like leaning in at that moment. And I, that's when it's like, it's kind of, I'm like, I'm like, oh, I make sure you deliver this properly because you got their attention. And um, you know, those moments and then the other moment was, I heard somebody uh, say they were born in 99 
And I was like, 99. I was like, wow. You know, next year will be the first year I, I play with somebody who's born in the 2000s. And I didn't think that would uh, be a realistic thing. But wow. When I heard the date that he said he was born, that's when I was like, what? <laughs> you know? But So there you are, the, the kind of the elders. You're almost like a coach on the field at times, it sounds like. I mean, with the, with within the role, you know, I have opportunity to communicate to the guys that are out there, and I just try to give them, you know, my eyes. So any, like, little tidbit that I see, like you see me with the tablet all the time, I try to share what I see from my perspective so that they can take it and do what they want with it. Um, just, you know, just trying to, you know, give an extra edge to whatever we can do. Um, but, yeah, I, I love being able to go out there and do it myself, too. Well, I got a feeling you're going to get a lot of those opportunities as, as we move on through the season. Carlos, what means the most to you? Pro bowler, college grad with a master's degree, successful businessman, community difference maker with the Carlos Dunlap Foundation. Uh, is that like asking which is your favorite child, which is your favorite son or daughter? Um, the most rewarding thing for me is probably the community difference maker. Because if I can leave that door open for the next person to come through and you know exceed what I've been able to do, that's the most rewarding for me. Just like when I give these, you know, my teammates um, little tidbits and they take it and apply it, that's the most rewarding for me because I know I can control what I can when I'm, you know, out there or in that position or given the opportunity. I know I trust my preparation, but if I can help someone unlock theirs or unlocks a different perspective so that they can go out here, because you know it's 100 and what, 20 yards of opportunity out here, so there's enough out here for everyone to eat. Um, so if I can help speed it up for someone or open that door or give it an opportunity or help give resources back home that, you know, you don't naturally have or, or might not have or that I didn't have, you know, because growing up I can't remember a professional athlete coming to my school teaching me about the process, going through recruiting um, with all the schools, sending you letters. Uh, you know, me and my family kind of fell forward through that and just stumbled through it the way we did. Um, and then from that, you know, getting your draft grade to seeing if you should go, if you should stay for your senior year, you know, going through that process to, you know, um, falling in the drafts a lot lower than you expected or, you know, thought that you would have been and then going out there in your rookie year and, you know, proving all those 31 other teams wrong getting you know yeah I don't want to go off accolades I don't want to talk about that but yeah just 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 the process of of it all and you know it's helped me become a better businessman off the field as well too but for all of those issues along the way that you had to deal with it sounds like you always came back to that thought as well this is an opportunity for me. You went back and got not only your bachelor's degree, but your master's degree. That's just not always heard of here at this level of the National Football League. Yeah, one of the things you said that was key for me was the opportunity. Um, you, know, I, you know, I promised my mom that I would finish my uh, bachelor's degree before I declared. So I was in school taking extra classes and I was 10 credits away from it when I, um, when I declared. Uh, so, you know, it was always in the back of my mind that I would go back. Florida always welcomed me back, said they would uh, support and honor my scholarship if I was to go back. So I wanted to capitalize on that opportunity regardless of the resources that I was afforded from being drafted. Um, and we had the lockout season, so I went back to campus, took a couple classes then, and chipped away at it. But I still needed, you know, one more. And then I was in Miami at my training facility, and a couple of guys, I just overheard them talking about um, you know, this new program that they're starting at the University of Miami um, that was an executive MBA program that was an accelerated program that allowed for athletes, artists, and influencers to come and do this 12-week program over the span of two years and get your master's. And I was like, I, I, want, I want to understand business better, so that what better way than submerging myself into that? So I signed up the day before and was in class the next day. That's amazing. That's yeah. an amazing story. It was and it's, challenging. it's paid benefits because uh, we mentioned independent businessman. Yeah. How's the restaurant? The restaurant's doing really good. You know, uh, you know, we had a couple uh, highlights for me. Uh, you know, the first one was when 
you know, Yelp reached out to me because they said we broke their algorithm on searches. Um, really? For, in a month, uh, that was in our first year. And then this year, um, you know, my manager sent me that, uh, you know, we were the number one brunch place for, I don't know, a couple weeks um, within a certain region or area of Miami. Um, and those are two of the most rewarding things because, you know, before I opened my spot, I know the brunch places that I was going to, and I still go there sometimes, you know, just just to get away and from check my out restaurant the and yeah. check out the competition some, but two, because I still enjoy the certain things from those places, right. you know. Um, so it's pretty cool to see and to be able to set, take ownership and pride in it because, you know, I literally put some sweat and elbow grease in there. Uh, if you ever see those pictures, that green wall, I bought that off Amazon and I built it through YouTube. Um, I put it up there because, you know, it was cheaper than the contrary after I got a couple quotes back, you know. Well, if you're down there in Miami, Honey Uninhibited, yes? Yes, sir, you there said you it right, yeah. Honey <laughs> Uninhibited, so yes. check it out. It's, it's one of the best. I, yeah. One more question for you, I know you gotta go. Um, a lot was made before the San Francisco game, or after the San Francisco game, I beg your pardon, of the meeting Saturday night, and you talked about it after the game, about Tyler standing up and sort of looking at old guys and saying, what's your why? Why are you here? I don't want to get too personal, but what's your why, Carlos? My why? Uh, you know, just continuing to, to prove myself right and to use this platform to impact in, um, in a positive way my community, you know, my family name. Um, you know, I can go pretty deep, but I was trying to give you like a couple, you know, one word answers. Um, but that's pretty much why I prove myself right. I'm a competitor, so I love to compete. So um, this is what I thrive on. This is my passion. So I try to wear it on my sleeve and use that passion um, for the, the good. And then I also like to take advantage of this platform that we're afforded to, you know, impact my community and open that door for the next, you know, doctor, um, programmer, um, athlete, you know, basketball, football, whatever, whatever it is, just try to get them resources and get them exposed to all the things that they can do. Because, you know, at my camps, I talk about, you know, everybody looks at me as a professional athlete, but I say, you can be a professional too, but what kind of professional do you want to be? Um, so that's kind of my approach. And that's why, you know, I have Bowen come out to my camp um, and a couple other local businesses come out to my camp, you know, the police, the fire department, our mayor, um, you know, just so they get exposed to, you know, different avenues of professionals because, you know, what you see is what they think is, um, you know, life or the lifestyle. And, uh, and typically it's artists, music artists or athletes. You know, those are the top two that you see the most of. But, you know, I know some um, doctors are doing very well off. You know, I went to the, the uh, hockey game the other day and met some tech guys that were doing very well off. Um, you know, ended up there. And then, uh, you know, last year I was on the elevator with someone who was in distribution. And then I was on a flight with a, a lady who, who created her own, um, her own eyelash, uh, magnetic eyelash uh, um, thing. And she had 1,200, she had 1,250 locations. So I was asking, yeah, I happened to be sitting next to her in the exit row. And I was like, you got 1,200 locations, yet you're sitting next to me. You know, I'm the athlete, and I'm sitting in the exit row. And I thought it was pretty cool, so we were chopping it up. And she actually switched seat with me so I can get the one, because there was no seat in front. So she gave me the extra leg room. So uh, we were talking, and I just, you know, kind of picked her brain to see what helped her get from one location to two, because that's the next thing that I'm looking to accomplish. So it's just cool, all the avenues, and um, it's inspiring to hear other people's stories. and just continue to formulate mine. The why of a multifaceted Carlos Dunlap. <laughs> I appreciate it. We appreciate it. Thanks for all you do for the community and for this football team. I appreciate it, Mr. Raber. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Go Hawks. There you go.